Frank Scaturo joins us now. Frank is running for the New York 4 congressional seat. Now, this story, as we continue our our block of political candidates here, took on a national scope when Newsmax wrote this article, End the Political Thuggery in Nassau County Votes Scaturo, as written in Newsmax by John Le Boutillier. Uh, this is a critical election year, and one of the most important primaries, primaries in America will take place also this coming Tuesday, June 26th, in New York State, to determine the Republican and Conservative Party nominees for the 4th Congressional District in Nassau County. The seat has been held by Carolyn McCarthy for 16 years, and the people of Nassau County have been without real representation. Her constituents rarely see her, and she has been a rubber stamp for leaders like Nancy Pelosi. Now, there has been dirty tricks, which unfortunately happens in politics, and uh, Frank Scaturo joins us. In full disclosure, I do know Frank Scaturo. We have appeared on television a number of times over the years, but in this seat, he's in my hot seat as a someone who's seeking to be the primary winner. So, Frank, good to talk to you again. And, uh, you know, you told me you were going to run, and here you are running. Hey, David, yeah, it's great to be with you tonight. And, uh, yeah, surely enough, uh, it's been a long haul, but uh, doing exactly what I said I'd do. Well, you, you've gotten into it. So let's get right to the point, factually, on the dirty tricks, as reported uh, on Newsmax and on uh, a few other sites. Yes, well, I am, as you know, you mentioned to uh, your listeners that you do know me, I'm a lifelong conservative Republican, have been active exclusively on the conservative side and, and politics and active in the Republican Party, uh, both locally and uh, federally. Well, I put together a campaign uh, for this seat over the last year and a half, and I had done the same thing back in the 2010 election, uh, putting together a grassroots uh, campaign, doing the things that candidates should do to get the uh, support that we need. I was succeeding by all accounts, except that in Nassau County, we have a boss-driven, top-down uh, political culture uh, in which, you know, if you're not someone that the boss controls, if you're not someone who's beholden to the boss, uh, he doesn't want to put you in for a nomination. He doesn't want to nominate you to a position that you might actually win. And he overturned every uh, stone that he could to find someone uh, that he could throw into this race. And to the credit of most people that he approached uh, in this district, uh, you know, the, the folks that he uh, asked to, uh, uh, to, to run uh, declined his, uh, his uh, request. But the last minute, he did find a 17-year county legislator uh, who went for it. He was thrown into the race at the last minute more to derail what I was doing than to actually put together a serious campaign to defeat Carolyn McCarthy. Now, of course, they couldn't tell the voters the honest reason that we were in a primary, the honest reason that I didn't get the party boss's endorsement, which is that you know, I wasn't beholden to him. Uh, that would, of course, scuttle their uh, efforts to uh, to get their guy uh, the uh, a primary victory. So instead, they decided to lie to the voters. What they, was they, the what was that lie uh, as alleged? They issued a flyer calling me an ultra liberal and an Arlen Specter Democrat. They uh, circulated a flyer with a wolf in sheep's clothing. It had those labels. It said, Frank Scaturo is an ultra-liberal masquerading as a conservative. That's why the Republican and conservative parties are endorsing uh, Fran Becker, my opponent. And then on the flip side, it called me an Arlen Specter Democrat. It had a photoshopped picture of me with Senator Specter. The actual photo that they uh, doctored was one of me with Congressman Bob Turner, the Republican who won the special election. Right, for, the, for Anthony Weiner's seat. That's right. What they did was they replaced Bob Turner with Arlen Specter. They photoshopped the flag lapel pin uh, that I was wearing out of the photo, so it didn't look as if I was wearing a flag. And 
they also said that you know, the top elected officials in Nassau County were endorsing Fran Becker uh, for this reason, that I'm an Arlen Specter Democrat. And I could, I could tell you the piece is false. The Congressman Lavoutlier called it uh, the most dishonest piece of uh, political propaganda he had ever seen. Again, as I mentioned to you before, I'm a lifelong conservative Republican, and I served on the Senate Judiciary Committee, and I think that's where the Arlen Specter point comes in. Senator Specter was the chairman of the committee uh, during the time that I served. Uh, but, of course, I was on the committee staff. I was serving Republican members along with a number of other staunch conservatives. This is Now, I, and, I, and that's also when I believe we first met uh, during that period. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, again, full disclosure. Now, has your campaign uh, been in touch with the Nassau County uh, GOP chairman, his office, uh, what has been the, after this poster, after this piece was put out, what has been the follow-up outside of the story? Oh, uh, the the top echelon of the county Republican Party, I can tell you, uh, did not even give me a meeting. They did not give me a screening this entire election cycle. Uh, that despite the fact that we had the only viable campaign to unseat McCarthy, that despite the fact that we had raised over $100,000 in the effort and got a lot of grassroots support. Uh, now, I can tell you below that very top echelon, a lot of the rank and file of the party are disgusted at what went on. There, there, you have a lot of good people in the system who don't like this boss-driven system. And in fact, if it was not up to one person to dictate 100% of what goes on, we wouldn't even have this primary. But the, the, the leadership has not been in contact with us at all. And in fact, last night, I tried to go to one Republican uh, club's uh, meeting I walked into the room and saw the leader of that club with these flyers in hand, the wolf in sheep's clothing that he was about to distribute. And I wasn't there to make a scene. I was actually there to just introduce myself to members of the club as someone, you know, a fellow Republican who was fighting for our shared principles. And when I uh, introduced myself to the executive leader who was there handing out these flyers, he kicked me out of the meeting. He's okay, that together. well, that that of course, and and again, I unfortunately in politics, uh, these kinds of stories are not new. I wish they would. Now let's move to policy in the couple of minutes we have left. Uh, the question that I asked uh, our prior guest, uh, State Representative George Fodd in Oklahoma, he's running for Oklahoma's second district. He's in that primary also on Tuesday. Uh, to you, Frank, policy points. Because it comes down to policies and the how. Uh, As a congressman representing this district, if you're able to unseat Carolyn McCarthy, should you win the primary, uh, what are a couple of your main focuses and how would you get it done? How would you work for your district and, in fact, for the country? Well, the overwhelming focus has to be getting our fiscal house in order. Our district is one of the highest tax jurisdictions in the country. That's because of the cumulative weight of the federal tax code, uh, the state uh, income tax, and property taxes that are the highest in the country. And of course, because the cost of living is so much higher uh, in Nassau County, uh, to begin with, the federal tax code is that much more onerous. We now have a debt that approaches $16 trillion. It's the size of the entire economy. And while it's always uh, easy to talk about the easy part of uh, 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 fiscal responsibility, uh, tax cuts, the more difficult part of that, spending cuts, reining in our spending habits, I think that's where the focus has to be. Now, for one thing, we do have to get rid of this entitlement that was created Uh, a couple of years ago in in Obamacare. I mean, the worst thing we could do when we already have uh, so much debt is to create a new entitlement. Right. Well, that's in the hands of the Supreme Court now, but let's move to something you just talked about. You Mm -hmm. mentioned the tax code and tax reform. Congress spends the money. Congress writes the legislation. Congress works with the White House and vice versa and with the Senate. Reform in our tax code is important to business, it's important to individuals, and it's more important even 
in many ways to the small businesses, the S corps and others that are being absolutely killed with uncertainty, being weighted down between the total tax burden that occurs at the local, state, and federal level. As a congressman, what is one of the things and a key action that Congress must take in reform in the tax code? Because tax reform is, it's frankly rarely talked about in Congress. It is rarely talked about. We have a federal tax code that's well over three million words long. I mean, it's more than three times the length of the complete works of William Shakespeare. And it's a testament to the influence of special interests. I think that we have to scrap the entire tax code that we have, the income tax code, and replace it with a flatter and a simpler code. Uh, It doesn't mean that you're going to eliminate all deductions. I don't think it's politically realistic to do that, but I think you can come much closer to uh, a system that is equitable, cut the loopholes uh, uh, that that are now exploited by, uh, by so many people to make to give us the convoluted mess that we have. Uh, And I also think that we should uh, look to reforming our spending process so that uh, our spending, or our debt for that matter, uh, would be capped at a more appropriate level of uh, of, of gdp at a historic level of gdp well those those are all those are all solid and lofty things that we need to do in congress uh the more conservatives we put up there the more people will hold to the principles of fiscal sanity frankly of free enterprise and of a limited government in its scope at the federal level the better we are as a nation. Frank Scaturo, thank you, my friend. It's been a while. Again, full disclosure, I met Frank some years ago when he, I believe you were still at House Judiciary uh, at that time and have appeared with him on television. But this is an interview about him, the story, and the context of his candidacy. The primary is this coming Tuesday in New York. And if you're a Frank Scaturo uh, supporter or if you're whoever you are supporting your candidate, My guess is this will be a busy weekend leading into the primary. So good luck to you, Frank. Thanks so much, David. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, as always. Thank you. 866-95-PATRIOT, 957-2874. We'll take a break. We'll come back with your calls. I see some of the tweets uh, going out here. A little bit of an argument over a song, or am I reading that right? I don't know. Let's talk about it. We'll see what Ray's got for music coming up next. Twitter at David Webb Show. We'll be right back. The David Webb Show on Sirius XM Patriot 125. Now, five nights a week. 